Greetings and salutations. This is Griffin. I'm going to be playing a game called Endless Summer. This game is through the app Choices, Stories You Make. Uh, it's available in the Google Play Store. I don't know where else it's available because I only have Android. Uh, if you are not following Anna Mardal's Let's Play of The Crown and the Flame, first of all, you should be. Um, but that's another game, another book they're called through the same app. It's like a choose your own adventure story. Um, the app itself is free. The games are free to play. However, if you look here at the top of the screen where it's got the keys, you earn a key every two hours to a maximum of two. It costs a key to play every chapter other than the first chapter of every book. Um, you can buy more keys or you can wait. <laughs> Next to it, you'll see the diamonds. Um, I did the math for these first two chapters. I will need a total of 63 diamonds. Right now, uh, the only way you can get diamonds is by paying money. Do you have to have diamonds? No, I've, I've played a couple of these books with no diamonds at all, but you will find that some of the more interesting choices, more fun choices, and more useful choices towards getting the outcome you want require spending diamonds. When you first download the game, you get 25 bonus diamonds to start with. They go fast. <laughs> so um, just to kind of give you an idea, uh, 60 diamonds costs about $5. So like I said, that'll get me through the first two chapters. Um, if you enjoy this Let's Play and would like to pay me back, uh, my, my PayPal is down in the description. Please feel free. So. The book's called Endless Summer. Uh, when I first got this app, The Crown and the Flame was my absolute favorite, and it is. It's really good. This one I thought would be a bit of empty fluff. Um, I was wrong. <laughs> it looks like it's empty fluff. It is not. Uh, this, this quickly became my favorite book in this app, so we're going to go through it again. I went through it once, now we're going to go Ah uh, yes, all, all purchases will be saved, which means later in the book, I did start spending diamonds on some purchases, on some options, and I can go ahead and revisit those options so you can see them again. But early in the book, I did not, because I thought it was just gonna be fluff and I didn't know I was gonna fall in love with it. So, adventure and romance await in the tropical paradise of La Huerta. Can you solve the island's mysteries? So this game has its own mechanics. Um, one of the things you'll see is a friendship meter next to the main characters that will let you see whether or not they like you. <laughs> and the choices you make can change that up or down. You'll, you'll see it. Um, we're gonna start with her. This is my girl that I've used the first time I played through. She's, she's perfect and I love her. Funny story, <laughs> when I first played the game, I wanted to put in the name Shana, S-H-A-N-A. -A. My phone decided to autocorrect that to the word shams. And there was no way to go back and change it, <laughs> unless I started everything all over again. Um, and I hated it. And then as I kept playing, the name grew on me because my character was so badass that she kind of made it her own. So now I'm, I'm imagining she has like some long pretty name like Shamika or something. And back in like middle school, someone gave her the nickname Shams and now it's just what everybody calls her. So we're gonna call her that. Um, yeah, cause it looks silly, but I don't care. It's awesome, she's awesome. Act 1, Chapter 1. This must be heaven. So there's a, a man in a green jacket and dog tags, with long shaggy hair, saying, Stay down, it's coming this way! Suddenly you flash to another scene, uh, a young man with close-cropped hair going, Shams, give me your hand! 
And then looks like we're on the verge of a vol or the the uh, ed lip of, vol of a volcano, and there's some obnoxious-looking dude in a business suit going, "You don't understand, do you? Of course not. But you will in time." And then you wake up. The plane shudders, jolting you awake. You blink away the strange dream as your eyes adjust to the bright sunlight outside. And you're flying. You're, you're in your plane here. Wow. Your best friend Diego gives you a goofy smirk from the seat beside you. Morning, sleepyhead. I'm not still dreaming, right? And you can see he's got the little yellow happy face because he is your friend. That 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 happy happy face is a um, friend status face. Doesn't feel real, does it? But we're finally on our way. The chatter of the ten contest winners from your school fills the small plane. Quinn, and you see she's got. Um, a little like light blue circle with a flat face that means neutral which for most of these people neutral just means they don't know you or they don't know you very well <laughs> one magical week in paradise here we come Craig has a little frowny face that means he does not like you in Craig's case I get the feeling that you know he does not like you for reasons like maybe you know each other and just did not get on don't get along very well there's two other characters that have a frowny face towards you and that's because they just don't like anybody <laughs> but you can win them over but it's hard all expenses paid what what raj 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 has a, a normal smiley face not a big happy smiley face that means he likes you raj likes everyone i don't know if he knows you or not he just loves everyone he's he's a fantastic human being good thing too i'm so deep in student debt i couldn't even afford instant ramen right now diego hey you okay shams bad dream just a really weird one i dreamt about about him you instantly recognize the guy walking down the aisle toward you. He's like, okay. You had a dream about Sean Gale? Well, what are you waiting for? Go talk to him. Diego pushes you out into the aisle right as he passes by. You bump into each other. Whoa, hello there. My friend Shams here wants to say something. Thanks, Diego. Thanks a lot. Not, you know, put me on the stump, put me on the spot or anything. <sighs> Ever wanted to hook up on an airplane? No, we're not going to say that. <laughs> I dreamt about you is also a little weird, but I dreamt about you. Is that so? A good one, I hope. Actually, it was kind of terrifying. Oh, not because of you. It's just... Don't worry, I'll take it as a compliment anyway. And that little green thing that went up, that means he likes us a little bit better. So that, that means we went up a little bit in his esteem, our relationship improved. Not enough to turn him from a neutral face to a smiley face, that takes a little more work, but it's a good start. Oh, and it's gonna explain it. Sean liked what you said. Choices affect your relationship with everyone you meet. The icon next to a character's name shows how they feel about you, for now. Over time, their behavior toward you will change. Build friendships, make enemies, even find romance. The choice is yours. Sean shoots you a smile as he slips by. Oh man, got that whole thing on video. You've got to see your face. Huh. Weird, is it really 5.15? We should have landed an hour ago, and it didn't feel like you'd been snoring that long. Hilarious. I'll go ask the pilot if something's up. As you make your way forward, you pass by the other students talking loudly over each other. Excuse me, will you all please cease your babbling? The tour guide is trying to speak. That's Alistair. 
Despite everything, he has a soft spot in my heart. He doesn't like us right now because he doesn't like anybody. He's very antisocial. Lila, she does like us because she likes everybody. It's her job. She's paid to like us. <laughs> Thank you, Alistair. As your tour guide for the week, I just wanted to say that we should all try to, you know, be friends. It is an island after all, so you're kind of stuck with each other. <laughs> Zara. Zara is my precious baby. She also doesn't like us because she doesn't like anybody. Precious baby. Is it too late to jump out of the plane? Okay, so there's the plane. The pilot has his combat boots kicked up on the dashboard. Excuse me, it's Jake, right? Weren't we supposed to have landed by now? Wait, are you asleep? Hey, he looks familiar, right? Huh? He opens his eyes and looks back at you. Instantly, you recognize his face, too, from that same bizarre dream. Stay down. It's coming this way. Listen, princess, don't you know it's rude to wake someone who's taking a nap? Princess? What can I say? I give nicknames to people who annoy me. Well, in that case, I'm calling you... For the record, um, anything you pick, he will like. <laughs> he likes all of these names. We're gonna, gonna, gonna go with Top Gun. Call you Top Gun. Top Gun, hang on. You can't give, be giving nicknames. That's my thing. I don't know. I like it. Might keep doing it. <laughs> you ain't clever enough to keep him coming. Takes work to be as good as me. Anyway, relax. We ain't landing till... The hell? That time ain't right. And that ain't right either. He whacks the instrument panel on his dash a few times. I did not know that you were supposed to whack instrument panel on a plane. Thanks, Jake. You sure you know what you're doing? If you knew half the things I've survived, you'd bet on me to get you through any f Out of nowhere, turbulence hammers the plane. You're thrown into the wall of the cockpit. Uh-oh. This looks ominous. Ah, just great. This storm front's coming in quick. He leans in and grabs the yoke. Get your ass in a seat here and tell everybody to buckle up. But... Now, princess... So you're flying through the storm. Sudden storm, very sudden. Dark clouds close in around the plane, gusts rocking it side to side. Everyone starts shouting. Oh, I am really regretting that airport Chipotle. Don't puke, bro. If you puke, I'm gonna puke. Where the hell did the storm come from? It was a clear day. This is Michelle. It happens, okay? This is totally normal. Yeah, sure. That looks normal. <laughs> Ball lightning, yay! <laughs> Outside, balls of orange electricity coalesce out of the dark sky and explode in a crackle of sparks. It, it looks like ball lightning, but I've never seen anything quite like this. This is Grace. Protect her. She's precious, precious cinnamon roll. This is all wrong. I can't die here surrounded by these morons. Alistair, shut up. Everyone just breathe. We're gonna get through this. Oh God, oh God. A blistering crack of thunder deafens you as lightning strikes the plane. Sparks fly in the cockpit. Well, engines just lost power. Bring her down manually. Everybody hang on. <laughs> the shouting grows louder as your classmates start to panic, all except one. A girl with a tight ponytail and a long scar across her eye sits alone in the back row of the plane, silent and unfazed.
Shams, safety first. Please find a seat. You look for an empty space around you. Who do you sit next to? We're gonna sit next to Quinn. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, Sean is a sweetheart. The mysterious girl in the back of the plane is, you know, has an aura of cool about her. Jake the pilot is hot. Quinn is, Quinn's our girl, she's our girl. We're gonna sit next to Quinn. You tumble into the seat beside Quinn as the plane lurches violently. Quinn's face is drawn tight, refusing to look. <sighs> Just breathe, it'll pass. This can't happen, not yet, it's too soon. Quinn grips the arm, rests tightly. Her chest rises and falls shallowly as if she's having trouble breathing. Gonna, we're going to take her hand. You rest your hand gently on top of hers. I'm here. You're not alone. We'll be okay. I... She relaxes and lets out a deep sigh. When she opens her eyes, they meet yours. Thank you. And you got a plus one. She offers you her hand. You take it. She smiles sweetly, and it somehow makes all the shouting and alarms fade to the background. I'm Quinn. Shams. Oh, but there's still a ball of lightning outside the, the plane. <laughs> Even though we're having a cute moment. Just a little farther. I think we're almost out. Just as the lightning reaches fever pitch, the plane bursts out of the storm clouds into a clear sky. Look, there it is. Get a good look now, because we're coming in fast. Welcome to La Huerta. And there's your island home for the next however long of this vacation that you've won a contest for. <laughs> The plane sinks towards the gorgeous, sprawling island. At its center, a volcano rises above the rainforest, breathing a white column of smoke. La Huerta Tower, this is tail number XCDMK, requesting emergency priority to land. Radio silence. Carlos, pick up, you lazy bastard, it's Jake. Still silence. Ignoring me won't make me forget the hundred bucks you owe me. Like it or not, we're coming in. The plane lands on a dirt airstrip at the edge of the island, pulling into a hangar. You step down the stairs into the warm tropical sunshine. Rough landing, Top Gun. Hope you don't work for tips. You kidding? I'm a damn hero for even getting you on the ground. Carlos, I need a tune-up. Carlos! As Jake marches off, the rest of your group pulls their luggage from the plane's cargo bay. This island's supposed to be one of the most beautiful places on Earth. The beaches, the waterfalls. It's also home to a plethora of rare flora and fauna. She's so cute. Only 10 spots on the trip, and they had to give one to this dork. You reach for your suitcase handle, just as Sean does. Oh, sorry. If you want to carry my bag, go right ahead. Oh my god, could you be any more desperate? A pretty girl in heavy makeup drapes her arms around Sean. People like you always hover around the spotlight like moths. Spotlight? What? Yeah, right, as if you don't know who Sean is. Seriously, our superstar quarterback? The Heisman frontrunner? Guys, 
is cool. Chill out. Look, Sean doesn't need any fame hounds hanging around. Got it? I get to make a choice here. <laughs> um, ideally, you want as many people as possible in the game to like you, because that's going to make later situations a lot easier. However, uh, and so and so the right thing to do here would be to compliment her and, and make nice. However, I, 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 I know a bit more about Michelle now having played through the game, and I don't hate her. But I don't really like her, and that was pretty that was pretty obnoxious. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna Yeah. <laughs> so what are you doing here? Excuse me? Yeah, now she has a frowny face. She doesn't like me. Sorry, Michelle. You heard me. You're just stalling to think of a comeback. Don't worry, I'll wait. You <sighs> Michelle, can you chill? And I don't mean Netflix and chill, I mean actual chill, please. You angered Michelle. Her relationship icon has changed and now she will behave differently towards you. As Michelle starts arguing with Sean, you back away. Your foot clinks on something. Huh? What's this? Oh! <gasps> We're gonna examine this thing. Looks like a dart. <laughs> Is that a tranquilizer dart? The island is full of clues that unlock the mysteries of La Huerta. They're hidden within choices and new areas to explore. Collect all the clues in an act to unlock an exclusive bonus scene. Replay the chapters to find them all. We're not gonna replay the chapters. I hope not at least. But the trank dart is our first clue. The vial's nearly empty. Must have hit its target. Yeah, and this is a pretty big dose. Whatever animal they took down must have been huge. You mean, if they took it down? I'm thinking if it was an animal. Like, you can't get in touch with Carlos at the radio tower. I'm, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> you look up and see someone watching you from nearby, listening to your conversation. It's the silent, mysterious girl from the plane. Hey, Diego, who is that? Dunno. Got eyes for the mysterious hottie, huh? There's something off about her. What gives you that idea? Well, she is too quiet, but if you were keeping count, <laughs> there are too many of us. Too many? Think about it. We've been told that 10 students from our college had won this trip, right? But count us off, not including the pilot or the guide. She makes 11. You're right. And I don't think I've ever seen her before, so who is she? You look in the girl's direction once more, and this time she's staring directly back at you. Your eyes lock. You try to look away, but for some reason you can't, as if she's pulling you in with her gaze. Hey, Lila, where the hell are your people? Jake storms back, and at last the silent girl looks away. The strange hold over you dissipates. You shake it off. There's nobody here. You all look around. You and your, your group are still the only people at the airstrip. They should be here in a shuttle to take us up to the main resort, but... I'm sure it's just a slight delay. No need to fret, they'll be here any minute. The hell with that. I'm going up to that control tower to get some answers. What do you think is going on there? No idea. Call it a gut feeling, but whatever it is, it ain't good. So, princess, 
coming or not? I could go with you. Wasn't talking to you, Maybelline. Um, okay, I guess the rest of you please follow me. We'll take the short walk up the hill to the resort. Sounds fun, right? Yay! Uh, Quinn, where are you going? Quinn is skipping past Lila, unbuttoning her, bow, her blouse. Some of us want to explore the beach a little first. We'll meet you guys at the hotel. Oof, this button's stuck. Shams, could you help me? Oh, sure. <laughs> Quinn draws close to you and you help her undo the last button. She slips out of her top. Ah, that's better. You're coming to the beach with us, right? Premium choices. Aha, this is what we're talking about with diamonds. They give unique opportunities for romance and adventure. They often also unlock clues that help you uncover the mysteries of La Huerta. I believe that we can take both of the premium choices. Like if we do one, we'll be able to go back and do the other. So we're going to start with Jake, because I want to know what's going on in the control tower. And I haven't done either of these choices before, so it'll be new for me. So we're going to the control tower with Jake. So you jog to catch up with Jake. So it's cool if I join you? You ask permission for everything? Come on, princess. Together, you scale the rickety, rusted stairs of the tall control tower. The rainforest stretches out before you, vibrant and lush. This place is gorgeous. You fly out here a lot, Top Gun. Here and every other privately owned resort island in the Caribbean, the favored vacation spots of the young and the privileged. You don't sound like you like it much. Hey, it pays the bar tab. So, hmm. What did you do before this? What is this anyway, 20 questions? Sorry. You fall silent, but after a moment, Jake continues on his own. Fighter pilot, Navy. Was good at it too, best in my class until I got discharged. What happened? Punched my commanding officer in the jaw. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it, buddy. <laughs> I'm sure he deserved it. Yeah, he did. Been ferrying rich folks around the Caribbean and sleeping in a beach hammock in Costa Rica ever since. That sounds... Honestly, it sounds pretty lonely. Uh, yeah, that's the appeal. <laughs> Bless you, Jake. I mean, I get wanting to get away for a little while, but don't you want more? Someone to come home to, someone to listen to you, someone to hold you all through the night. You offering princess. What? No, I, I just meant, you know, in theory. In theory, I wanted to be the best pilot the Navy had ever seen. In practice, well, can't beat a cold beer in a Caribbean sunset. You continue to climb the tower stairs when a step cracks in two beneath you. You start to fall through. Jake! Jake reacts instantly, grabbing you and pulling you into his arms. Gotcha. The rusted fragments of the metal step twirl as they plunge 50 feet to the ground. I think you just saved my life. Yeah, now you owe me one. Come on. Finally, you reach the top of the tower. Jake pushes open the door to the control tower. Carlos, you dumb... Hey, what the... It 
it's empty. There's no one here. Thanks, Eagle Eyes, I couldn't tell. <laughs> you wander by the desk and drag your finger across it. It comes up dusty. Are you sure they still use this airstrip? Of course I'm sure. I was just here a few days ago and I'm damn sure... He trails off. Jake? You turn to find him staring past you through the window, enraptured by what he sees. Oh, oh bless, oh look at his face. Oh, look at his silly puppy dog raggedy face, I love him. In the distance, the island itself pulses with red and blue light, colors fluttering over the trees, tinting the atmosphere in a rippling aurora. Weird lights, two of ten clues. What? On instinct, you... Hold Jake's hand. Yeah. You reach down blindly and find Jake's hand, his fingers laced with yours. Jake, what is this? I... I don't know. Your gaze meets his, your face is close. The beautiful colors play across his eyes. Jake, I... Time seems to slow down until you blink. Suddenly, the colors are gone. Hey, it stopped. Jake exhales, shaking himself out of it. He looks down and sees your fingers still entwined. Uh, sorry. Look, it must have been something weird with the glass here. Who knows? Forget it. Just come on. Jake ducks out of the control tower. You hesitate a moment longer, looking back to see whether the aurora returns. But everything appears as it should. He followed Jake down the stairs. He heard distant laughter and looked to see Quinn and the others playing on the beach. Hey, Shams, come look at this view. I'm heading up to the hotel to catch up with Lila. Carlos must be up there. Which way are you heading? Jake, you're cute, but I'm gonna go spend some time with Quinn. <laughs> I'll catch up with you later. Good luck finding your friend. You slip off your shoes and step onto the beach, the fine, smooth sand warming your toes. Ah, that's nice. Quinn twirls around the sand, laughing. This must be heaven. Raj spreads his arms and falls backward into the sand with a deep sigh. Yep, I'm just staying here all week. I'm never, ever moving again. Could someone give me a beer? <laughs> oh, this beach is nice. It's just too bad Sham's here. <laughs> nice one, Meech. Call me Meech again, and I'll rip your spine out by your stupid hair. Quinn bounces over to you. Isn't this magical? It's almost like we have the whole island to ourselves. <laughs> Hold on to that thought, Quinn. <laughs> it's so peaceful, and that water looks amazing. I wish we could go swimming. Who says we can't? Quinn grabs your hand and leads you out into the water. Come on. Ha, whoa. Hope you're a good swimmer. There's actually a thing where we're gonna have to swim later. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much an Olympian. <laughs> good, cause I'm not the best dad. And so if anything happens, just carry me back to the beach and give me CPR, okay? 
Sure, I'll be your hero. You strip down to your bathing suit. The water is warm and welcoming, its soothing currents curling around your legs. Are you always a spontaneous? Quinn's eyes come to rest on the horizon. No, I wasn't always like this. But after last year, I've tried to make the most out of every day. Quinn falls silent. You know, my instinct is to ask where it happened, but you know what? It's the first day of our vacation, and I don't really feel like making her answer heavy questions <laughs> is really the nicest thing to do right now, so I'm going to splash her. <laughs> you scoop up a handful of water and splash it all over Quinn. Ha! <laughs> oh, I get it. You're pretty spontaneous yourself. She likes us now. Yay! And then she smirks and splashes you back. Ha <laughs> ha hey! You splash each other, drenching yourselves. Quinn rushes toward you, then trips and falls onto you. You fall into your back in the surf with Quinn on top of you. Oops. Oops, you sly little minx. Don't apologize to me. Suddenly, Quinn's eyes light up and she pulls off you. Shams, look! Something small and dazzling leaps out of the water and unfurls wings that gleam like jewels. Whoa! Oh my gosh! What? What is... See, I didn't do this one before. What is that? Why is there a... a, a, a butterfly... Sea, sea dragon. Sea dragon? Is that what they're called? Seahorse. Why is there a butterfly seahorse? <laughs> also, I just want you to take a moment to look at Quinn. She's so cute. She's so cute. <sighs> okay. The creature flutters in front of Quinn, its iridescent wings catching the sunlight. <coughs> then it zips off into the distance. Strange creature. Three of ten clues. Did that seriously just happen? Have you ever seen anything like that? This island must have species we've never even heard of before. Quinn turns back toward the shore. Guys, did you see that? Huh? Who cares? Do you see this? Craig is slowly burying a snoring Raj under a pile of sand. Everyone else already went up to the hotel. Come on, let's catch up. Who's going to carry my bag? Shall really? The others start to head up, leaving you and Quinn behind as the surf swirls around you. I can't believe they missed it. It was incredible. You and I are the only ones who saw it. It's almost like we shared a secret. She looks at you for a long moment and laughs. I'm glad you're with me, Shams. Me too. You and Quinn head back up the beach and get dressed. You and Quinn catch up with Michelle, Ra Raj, and Craig. Together, you wind your way up the paved road with your suitcases. You're beginning to fatigue when you come around the bend. This must be it. The Celestial. Oh, hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Is this place even real? Let's go already, my luxury suite is waiting. Your group excitedly heads toward the lobby, passing under a long, ornamented overhang of white marble. Your heartbeat quickens with excitement as your group rushes through the automatic doors, and the five of you freeze. Ah. Uh, what the... The 
group that left with Lila is standing in front of you, bewildered. Beyond them, the entire lobby is devoid of life. I... I don't understand. The silence is deafening. The front desk stands deserted. Suitcases and luggage carts lie unattended. On a table, a half-finished wine glass gathers dust. Hey, Shams, um, do you happen to know where the hell is everyone? <laughs> And that was the end of chapter one. I am going to come back and do chapter two in a little bit. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and end this. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, again, there'll be links to other interesting related things and also to my PayPal if you would like to help me continue to make these, uh, which will require money for diamonds in the future. Um, and those will both be down in the description. Thank you so much for watching. This is Griffin. Have a great day.